Hello, I am Red Mage, and welcome to a Magic the Gathering video featuring the color red. In today's video, Burn with O'Hare Ashenil in Lost Caverns of Ixalan Standard. Burn decks, generally speaking, can be thought of as combo decks, specifically critical mass combo decks. In a traditional burn deck, in Legacy or Modern for example, you are essentially counting to 20 damage. Those are aggro combo decks, as opposed to combo control, like most combo decks are. But the aggro part is just part of the critical mass of damage producing cards, not the primary game plan. This version of Burn is even more of a combo deck. We do have some of the critical mass elements, specifically Monastery Swift Spear and Kamano Faces Kagasan. But we're focused on pairing O'Hare Ashenil with the pinging effects of Thermo Alchemist, Kessic Flame Breather, and Chandra Dress to Kill. O'Hare Ashenil turns all of those 1 damage pings into 4 damage, or 5 damage if it happens to have a plus 1 plus 1 counter from Kamano. Virtue of Courage also pairs nicely with those pinging effects for insurmountable late game card advantage. And of course, both Virtue and O'Hare synergize with all of our burn spells. So rather than dealing as much damage as possible as quickly as possible, we are trying to set up a mid to late game where we can go off and win in one or two turns. This means that it is vitally important that we understand our role in different matchups. Against Control and Ramp, we are the aggro deck. But against aggro decks, whether that's mono red, mono white, soldiers, or what have you, we are the control deck. There are few situations where we would take an aggressive position before establishing control of the board. And against mid-range decks, mono black or esper for example, we are a classic combo deck, trying to set our combo and interacting only when we have to. I tried a more low to the ground version of this deck with only one Chandra and three O'Hare Ashenil, but I found that it wasn't fast enough and went up to four of each to max out on our combo potential. And I trimmed the impulse draw spells since the mana curve is higher now and we have Chandra for card advantage. Burn is my favorite archetype in magic by far. If you are similarly inclined or if you like to pull off all-in-one turn combo kills, then this is a great deck to try. I've been able to rank up with this, winning between 55 and 60% of my games. It's hard to get much better than that over a large sample size, especially in best of one. I hope you enjoy the gameplay, and we'll be back at the end to wrap up. It's a little sketchy, but I think we keep it. If we're up against an aggro deck, we can kill their first few creatures. Drop an O'Hare Ash O'Neill and be off to the races. Okay, soldiers. A uh, little scary because they can dump out creatures faster than we can kill them. All right. So I think we have to let this resolve and then kill the Thalia next turn. Uh, if we kill the frontliner now we just won't have anything to cast next turn anyway and that's not a priority I'm gonna wait this could you know make us run into a counter spell but I don't want them to just play another Thalia straight away Okay, so this is almost certainly an indication that they're about to convoke. If we kill the Thalia now, they shouldn't be able to.
we can't prevent them from convoking by killing anything now, so I think we hold off and kill the more valuable creature, which is the Harbin. Okay. Huh. Okay. So maybe they don't have the convoke thing anyway. Okay, well, let's kill this thing for sure. Then we drop an O'Hare Ash O'Neill. And hopefully it's blocking plus damage multiplying. We'll get us somewhere. Brutal Cathar. Okay. The unfortunate thing about this is that unless we have another spell to play. Oh, we do in fact have another spell to play. All right, so we can Chandra on our turn and then kill the Brutal Cathar on their turn after they attack and we'll be able to ambush something. That seems good. If we had killed the Cathar first, we could have dealt four damage with the Chandra's ping. This is fine. So they can choose not to attack so that they can draw a card. Um, but then we're kind of okay with that anyway. And I think we just kill the token, save max damage. If we kill the Frontliner, they can just bring it right back out. That doesn't really help us too much. All right, then. So do we have... Oh, okay, we actually do have enough. If we Virtue, play a Mountain plus Chandra. I don't necessarily want to just... I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. It probably is right to do it this way. Play the Virtue. Then plus Chandra. And if we hit a Lightning Strike, we'll be able to save the one in our hand. Now, unfortunately, we waste all of this stuff, but... Um, I don't think we can afford to let the Sky Strike Officer live. We've got so much going on. With Chandra alive. Okay. This is totally fine. There's, I mean, there's, what are they going to do? Exactly. All right, so seems pretty clear. We just play the other Virtue and bury them in card advantage. So we decide on the first Virtue before we decide on the second one. So we can take this action if we've got enough. Yeah, we don't need to do the next one. So we'll decline that. We'll play this. We can... I mean, I think we just go face at this point, right? Maybe we want to kill one creature just to be sure. I don't think it matters too much. I guess I'll kill the reinforcements just to make sure. And then hit them. There shouldn't be any way that they can deal lethal. That's great. Okay. And they give up. I really just wanted to make sure there there shouldn't have been any way that they could get there. 
but just in case they're playing some card that I couldn't think about. I think we're basically guaranteed to win as long as they can't cheese us out. And so that's what I wanted to make sure they couldn't do. So these kind of hands happen a lot with this deck where you're kind of not doing much for a while and then you start going crazy. Although drawing Kamano is great. So no matter what they take, we can still kill it. I'll just virtue the bat. And then I don't know if we'll reckless impulse next turn necessarily. So it's interesting that they were willing to use a card to prevent us from having our virtue. Obviously, the virtue is a big deal, but... They're still going down resources, and there's specifically a target for a cutdown. It's entirely possible they have another one in their hand. I think it makes sense to <clears throat> go ahead and play the Chandra, even though we can't protect it. Unless they have uh, a removal spell, they won't be able to kill the bat. Or they won't be able to kill the Chandra with the bat. So, we would have it around to cast the O'Hare Asher Neal, but uh, we do not have that card anymore. I mean, this is still okay. They just missed a land drop. I think what we do, it doesn't matter too much either way. We'll just go ahead and wait. We'll probably, we'll almost certainly lightning strike both bats. Do we want to hold this lightning strike in case they have another bat to take our Ashenil? I mean, they've... They've already cast three. Nah. If they've got it, they've got it, but... It does allow them to draw a card, but I'm not certain that that's worse than making a 1-1 in this specific context. Either way, deal four. Next turn, if, I mean, we have mega lethal, so, oh, it's Esper. That's interesting. So there's a good chance they're going to respond to us plusing the Chandra by doing something to the O'Hare Ash and Neil. But there's not much we can do about it. We don't have anything at instant speed. Oh, okay, they're just dead. Aww, you're looking a little singed. All right, this is more of a classic low to the ground burn hand. Oh, looks like mono red. Okay, this is a good start for them, but it's not the end of the world by any means. Happy to draw a land there. That means next turn we can Flame Breather plus Kamano. Or 
Kamano plus Virtue or Lightning Strike, potentially. Alright, so they have a Lightning Strike. We can make them two for one themselves by blocking the Scoundrel. Yeah, I think we wait. They could also have a Monstrous Rage. Well, that's what they have, okay. So I think here we want to just Lightning Strike the Swift Spear. And then we'll get a counter on the Flame Breather with the Kamano. I'm going to attack only with the Kamano. That way we can block the Scoundrel since our life total is so low. Godric, okay. It's smart of them to attack with the Scoundrel. It's totally worth it to sacrifice that to get the extra damage through. In fact, I don't think we can even block the Scoundrel. We go to three. They've got two cards in hand. Yeah. That's quite unfortunate. Oh, man. Yeah, it would have been great to draw a land there. I don't think we can play a creature because we have to kill the Phoenix Chick. Which is going to cost us a life from the Wicked Roll. That's a shame. We're also fairly close to just being able to uh, finish them off. But what else you got? I mean, either they have another thing or they don't. <laughs> okay. Huh. Is that going to work? It might. So we kill the chick, we go to four. We block the Godric and the Scoundrel. We go to two. And then they have Godric Swift Spear Foundry. So if they don't draw a spell or a haste creature, we win. We'll see. I mean, if they have anything, I, if it's not a land, it's hard to imagine it not winning them the game. I guess an Inti, if they're playing Inti, or a Godric, if they drew another Godric. <laughs> that is awesome. So I totally see why they're playing Alchemist Gambit. I'm sure they've won a lot of games because of it, but this is kind of why you don't play it, right? Uh, it's also a three mana sorcery, which is not something you want a whole lot of in your mono red aggro deck. On the play, this is a pretty good hand. There's a lot of damage here. Mono red. So we definitely just want to draw all the burn spells so we can kill their creatures and be pinging them whilst we do. Ah, 
If we block, they get a card. Is that worth preventing the three damage? Maybe when they have a handful of cards and they only get one. Yeah, go for it. I mean, that takes their entire turn next turn if that's what they do. We could Chandra here, but next turn we can Chandra plus and Virtue, maybe the Kamano, or them. Okay. Which one are you going to kill? Oh, they're going to attack first. Because they don't really want to cast the Warcrafting, I think, is the reason. Which is fine. Hopefully they don't have, like, two Monstrous Rage. That would be so bad. Okay, pass to damage. Alright. I mean, that's good for them. They have a land next turn. But the Warcrafting will be wasted. I mean, it, it's a removal spell, so it'll do that job. Okay. Okay. I mean, I would prefer to have these creatures, but I'm not too upset about that. I'm not going to worry too much about protecting the Chandra, except by killing the Kamado. I'm not going to hold... The, it's not like I'm going to chump the Felden and give them extra cards just to prevent them from getting the Chandra to one. If they can kill it with a burn spell or an extra creature, that's damage that's not going to us. Okay. So this is bad. Um, they get to kill the Chandra, establish a board, all of that. So we're not dead next turn, which means I think we slam the Virtue and see if we can cheese them out. I mean, I guess it's possible Dumble, Monstrous Rage would probably get there. Okay. All right, let's see what happens. That's a terrible draw. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. What do we have to draw to win? There's nothing we can draw to win. Okay. So in that case, we have to just kill the Swift Spear, I guess. That's unfortunate. Do we attack? Mm. I don't think so. In part because the Flame Breather is the only thing that we have to trigger the Virtue next turn by casting this Virtue. I think we just chump the Godric. Okay, they don't have an instant. Come on, oh, okay. So we would have lost if we had not chumped. All right, here we go. All right. Um, we do not play this virtue for sure. Um, it would eat up all our mana. Let's see if we can... Yikes. Okay, so... Mountain, 
flame breather impulse leaves us only one mana left. But ah, oh yeah, and so we'd have to hit play with fire exactly or Kamano. Alternately, if we just reckless impulse, we're only getting one trigger from the virtue. They'll go to three. But we have more mana if we draw something. Wow, that's really close. So we've got six hits for one mana. And... Wow. Yeah, I think we just have to do it this way. Okay, there we go. Whew! And we're back to wrap up. What I really enjoy about this deck, aside from sending damage directly to the opponent's face, is that it can win against any deck. Against aggro decks, we have a ton of removal. Against lower decks, we have time to set up our combo and save our burn spells for the opponent's face. So the opponent really needs to be interacting with our game plan and putting a lot of pressure on us at the same time. Obviously, the standard card pool right now is incredibly strong. Most decks are really good. You're not going to have an insurmountable advantage against any particular deck in general. But there will be plenty of games where, at the beginning of the game, it looks like you might struggle, and then by the mid-game, you've completely taken control, and it seems like your opponent has no shot, even if they're still at 20 life. That is the advantage of having such immense power in the deck. If you're looking to maximize your win rate, I might choose Mono Red Aggro over this, but if you're looking to maximize your enjoyment and satisfaction while also having a positive win rate, then this is a great deck to try. I hope you enjoy burning your opponent's face off, and I'll see you in the next one.